make sure that everybody gets one before they leave today. And we're going to continue to remember, you can turn it up just a little bit. We're going to continue to remember uh, Sandra as she's traveling to uh, see her mother and their family. And we're continue to remember the Dreisbach family. Uh, Anthony Dreisbach had a mining accident, but we're going to continue to believe God for him. His little girls were here this morning, and they were ministered to. So uh, Mandy has helped taking care of them. She's going to take them back to the to their house. So just want to continue to remember that family. Amen. So let's just agree together. Let's just stand this morning, or you know, those who can or whatever want to stand. Let's uh, let's just continue to lift up, Father. We just lift up before you first of all. Lord, we give you praise and glory and honor that you are the God who can help us. You are the one who has made a way for us. So, Father, we want to say thank you, first of all, for Brother Jerry being here this morning, God, that you, uh, we ask that you will touch his body, minister, we speak life to him in Jesus' name, that you'll continue a good work in him, amen, continue a good work in our brother, Lord God, that you'll uh, bring uh, help to his body that he needs in Jesus name Father we lift up Anthony that had this accident God Lord we just pray for him God that, that you're working in his body God we pray and ask for healing for help for him God that he'll be able to come through this in Jesus name be restored to health in Jesus name we pray for his wife and family, God, that you minister to them. That every praise, that we be able to give every praise to you, God. Every praise goes to you. And, Father, for Sandra, that you'll just minister to her as she's ministering, helping her mother, God. That you'll just give her grace and strength, God, and peace to go, uh, to go and minister and help her mom. So, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Every praise to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Let's sing it now. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship in one accord, Lord. Every praise, God, every praise is to our God, yes, Lord. Sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God, every praise. To our God, yes, every praise is to our God, every word of worship in one accord, every praise, yes, Lord, every praise is to our God, yes, Father, we thank you today, sing hallelujah to our God, all oh, glory, hallelujah, into our God, every praise, yes, every praise is to our God, yes, Lord, God, my Savior, come on, sing it, church, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, yes, he is, yes, he is. You believe it this morning, sing it. God, my Savior, you are God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. And as we continue to sing that, and let's, uh, I want to just share with you this morning that as we've been praying for prayer requests, we've got like four pages. Of people we've been praying for over half of them have been answered amen answered prayer praise God so prayer makes a difference prayer touches lives so I just want to encourage you with that this morning and we're thankful for what brother uh, for what God is doing in, in uh, brother uh, Nathan amen continues the work in his body but we're just so thankful Lord that you answer prayer yes he is go ahead and crank it up brother God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, He is, yes, He is now, God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, Yes, he is. 
to our God. Glory, hallelujah to our God. Amen. I know that song goes on and on and on. I love it. I think it's a beautiful song because it's true. Every praise goes to our God because our God is great. Our God is able. Amen. Our God is able and not only is he able, he is willing. Amen. Remember the man with the withered hand and he said, Lord, if you will heal my hand, Jesus said, I will. And he stretched out his hand. It was sealed. Amen. Praise God. So believe the Lord this morning. Continue to believe and continue to receive. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I receive. Amen. Brian's coming for our announcements this morning. Hallelujah. Don't you love the announcements? You may be seated. Welcome to everyone, too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is good to be here. Hallelujah. And uh, glad y'all are with us today. The Lord is, uh, uh, I was telling Brother Jerry, I'm glad he's, he's an answer to prayer this morning. I'm glad to see him here. Hallelujah. And uh, we do, we pray for uh, we pray for our church family. And uh, we have uh, some slips also on uh, praying for our pastors, for Pastor Mike and Donna. And uh, I'll make sure you, everyone has one of those today. And uh, you just continue to commit yourself to uh, keeping them lifted up in prayer um, because uh, they've got a good message and and the enemy knows it and so we want to make sure that uh, we continue to lift them up and and uh, as God's angels surround them and protect them each and every day so uh, uh, I'd welcome you to Victory Worship Center uh, I welcome our internet audience glad you are watching with us today and being a part of our service and uh, remind you of our services here at Victory on uh, Sunday, we have prayer at 9.30 and Sunday school at 10 and worship at 11. Sunday school starting next Sunday. Uh, we've got a new series by John Brevere, The Holy Spirit. And uh, John Brevere has a, the Messenger series. And uh, we've done a lot of his material here in Sunday school that's blessed our hearts. And I know this is going to be a good one too. Uh, so uh, we've, we've got some flyers put out and uh, so to invite uh, the public to come and join with us and those other churches to, to join with us if they can. Um, don't want y'all other people to miss their church, uh, but if they some reason don't have Sunday school, we would like to invite them to be here and join us for this because I think it'll bless your heart. And uh, so remember that. Um, also remember uh, next Saturday uh, be our Smart Choice food delivery. Um, and uh, that's going to be from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. And also, we also uh, we, we get our church cleaned up uh, after that time. And uh, so we appreciate those that uh, help us. And, uh, you know, we want to keep our building spick and span. And, and uh, you know, this is God's house, and we want to honor him by, by doing that. So we thank you for all of those that participate in uh, helping us do that inside and out. And... Uh, Remind you of Tuesdays is our corporate prayer time at uh, 10 a.m. If you uh, have prayer requests you'd like for us to continue to add on to our list, uh, please let me know or call the church or email or however, whatever method it is, snail mail if that required. And uh, But we want to be conscientious of those in our community. Uh, we've lifted up a lot of people this morning in prayer and see God continue to answer prayers. Um, we, we've even got checklists of what God's already been doing and our, our being, us being faithful in prayer. God has answered those and blessed us greatly. Uh, Wednesday is our midweek service. Uh, we have uh, 
prayer and, and Bible time, and we also have our Victory Kids, and uh, so continue to appreciate uh, Meredith and Leah as they uh, work with our children and, and, to, and continue to encourage them, and we're thankful for the kids that come, for the parents that allow their kids to come, and for us to be able to uh, spiritually guide them and direct them, and uh, so lots of good things going on here at Victory. And uh, so we are just glad to be here to worship God and to just give him honor and glory for all that he's done in our life. And so I would ask Georgiana if she'd come and share with us for our tithes and offerings. Good morning. Um, you all know, or do you know, that we have a rich heritage in Christ. We're going to look this morning at uh, some of the... Um, people, I want to say characters, but not characters, they're real people, uh, in the uh, Old Testament that were rich. Uh, first of all, there was Father Abraham. Uh, in Genesis 13, 2, it says, And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. Um, also, Father Isaac was rich. In Genesis 26, 12, and 14, it says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. For he had possessions of flocks and possession of herds, and the Philistines envied him. So don't you know that when, you, that when we have riches, then the world is going to envy us because they want what we have. Uh, Father Jacob was rich. Genesis 30, verse 43 says, And the man Jacob increased exceedingly, and had much cattle, and made servants and men servants, and camels and donkeys. So all of these spiritual relatives tithed and gave generous offerings. So it's now time for us to join the blessings that they enjoyed, because it's our inheritance as well, because we are God's as well. Galatians 3.29 says, And if you were Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So we are believers. We're, we're tied to, to Abraham, so the things that he had we can have as well. So let's get ready for our offering confession this morning. As I pay my tithes and sow my offerings, Lord, you promised to open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I would not have room enough to contain. I am a kingdom builder so that others may live. I'm a faithful tither and a joyful giver. I sow generously, therefore I reap generously. I am blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Are you blessed to be a blessing? Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today. We are. Because Jesus is a blessing. Amen. Hadn't Jesus been a blessing to you? Whew. And see, he was blessed to be a blessing. He gave up his, his rights and his way to do the will of the Father so that he could be a blessing. That is beautiful. <laughs> Praise God. Father, thank you for this uh, the seed and the sower. Lord, we thank you for the benefits, God, of receiving in your kingdom and giving into your kingdom. God, for they are just seeds, but the seeds grow into a mighty harvest. Father, for the kingdom of God, for, for every uh, name, Lord, for every person, for every destiny, God, there is nickels, dimes, and quarters. And Father, this is just monetary, but God, you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask. So Father, we ask you to multiply your seed for the things for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. You agree with me this morning? Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, stand and, and, and have praise and our praise and worship time this morning hallelujah so lord you know our life is to be praise and worship our life is to every day is to be praise and worship to our god now we come together we raise our hands we we it says the lamentation says we lift our hearts with our hands to the lord god so we, we it's like surrender to the lord so father today we just raise our hearts with our hands and say here i am lord do what you desire. And, and you know, today you're not forgotten. God has not forgotten you. He's not forgotten me. That is such a, a blessing to know. So go ahead, brother. We're going to sing this. And it just simply says, I am not forgotten. Now, it's a, it's a little bit on the rowdy side, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You know, I'm not forgotten. 
know the dance, don't you? I am not forgotten. God knows my name. I am not forgotten. Thank God. I am not forgotten. You are not forgotten. God knows my name. He knows my name. Thank you, Lord. Internet people, you are not forgotten. God knows your name, and He's got the best for you today. Amen. Hallelujah. He knows my name. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Thank you. Strength over weakness. Joy over sadness. He knows my name. Father Jesus on the list. something but as we you can just softly just fade that out a little bit okay it's gone okay go ahead and uh, read the first uh four verses go ahead and read it out real loud psalm 40 come on i will sing forever about the gracious love of the lord from generation to generation i will declare your faithfulness with my mouth i will declare that your gracious love with us was established forever in the heavens itself you have established your faithfulness i have made a covenant with my chosen one i made a promise to david my servant i will establish your dynasty forever and i will lift it up one who build who will build your throne from generation to generation from generation to generation, he has made. God is faithful. Go ahead and crank it up as we finish that up. That hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we are not forgotten. You've made covenant with your people, God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the covenant you've yes, made with Lord. your people. The covenant of love. The covenant of grace. That we are not forgotten, God. Lord. You have not forgotten us, God. And we give you praise and glory and honor, God.
I am Hallelujah. not forgotten. We I am are not forgotten. forgotten. God knows our name. I am not forgotten. You I am are not forgotten. forgotten. We are not forgotten. God knows our name. He knows my name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not only has he not forgotten us, amen, but he has not forgotten the nation of Israel this morning, amen. Israel is God's chosen people. Come on. God will have a people. Praise God. God has still has a people, yes, his people does. Israel. Amen. So today as that next song's playing, Amen. we're going to pray for the nation of Israel Praise this morning. God. Praise okay, God. Pastor. Praise God. Yeah. Well, Father, we just want to lift up Israel to you as we continue this morning. We're continuing to believe you, God, to minister to Israel today. God, the the people that are yours, the people are coming home to their land. And, God, we pray for them today that their eyes would be open to see and to know, God that you are God, that they will know that Jesus is Lord. Father, we pray for them today that salvation come to them, for you have promised it. And you are faithful to your promises. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it. The God is my salvation. Yes, Lord. In him I trust and will not be
magnify the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah, Lord, we magnify the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Lord, we just love you today. We love you today. We love you today. Lord, just show yourself strong this morning in this place, O oh God. Lord, I know that there's people out there watching by Internet that God need a touch of the Spirit of God. Lord, they need to hear a word of truth that will help set them on the course for the life that you have for them. Lord, we have all been given a, a, a work and, a, and, a, and a, a, a thing to do in this life that God brings glory and honor to the name of Jesus. So, Lord, today... I ask you to help me. And I want you to stretch out your hands toward me today as I pray. Whether you're watching through the internet or here in this house, I just want you to pray for me. Father, I just thank you this morning that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Every invader against the knowledge of God is shaken to the core now in Jesus' name. Everything that would try to rise itself up against the temple of the Holy Spirit, Lord, is bound now and released from its assignment. Every weapon formed against me this morning in, 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 in uh, re releasing this word that you have given, we thank you that those, those chains are broken and freed that, Lord, bondages are broken this morning off of me first and then off of the people today. Lord, I thank you that our minds are renewed to the word of God so that the plan of God will be fulfilled in our lives personally, corporately, and within this region. God, you have called us to Dixon and Webster County. You have called us to this place for such a time as this. And thank you, Lord, for this word today, a word of hope in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Give your neighbor a high five. Praise God. Don't slap them. Don't knock them out. Just give them a high five. Let them know that, hallelujah, we're in this thing together. You know what? Together we can do more. Together we can do more, amen. It's good to see Brother Jerry this morning. Praise God. Though the enemy, uh, uh, you know, I don't say this hesitantly, uh, but though the enemy attack, we know that the greater one in Brother Jerry yeah. has set him on a high place yeah. and has caused him to walk in victory. We thank you that uh, we're just thankful today to know that there is freedom in the house. There's freedom in right thinking. If we get our thinking right, everything else will straighten up. If we, get our, if we get our thinking right, uh, then everything else will straighten up. And, you know, though, uh, though we've got uh, at least three families out missing today, hallelujah, uh, they're not missing in action, they're just missing in here today, uh, you know, I want you to look around you and realize that we are our brother's keeper. Hallelujah. Uh, doesn't, scripture doesn't say we are our pastor's. Uh, well, the pastor is not the, just the brother's keeper, but we are our brother's keeper. When somebody is missing, you know, the, the best thing to do is to say, you know, today, it's, today we can do these non-obtrusive things. We can send a text to somebody and say, hey, I missed you. And uh, if the person, you know, sometimes people get offended when you say I missed you because it's like they've got a reason and, and you, you don't know the reason yet, so that's why you're saying I miss you. But sometimes people get offended when you say, uh, you know, but that's just, the, that's just the adversary. So we just want people to know that we love them and we miss them when they're not here. So go ahead, send a card or letter. Those of you that have uh, been given uh, the mentorship and responsibility for some young lives, we ask that you uh, stay in touch with those children I think that was just a God idea from uh, from uh, Meredith to uh, to match up some uh, folks with some kiddos. You know, guys, if we don't see ourselves linked together as the body, the body will fall apart. If we don't see a relationship as the glue that holds the body together, we're in trouble. I'm just going to set it out there for you, okay? If we don't see relationship as the glue, and, of course, the relationship with God is most important, and, of course, relationship with people comes comes next, but we got to realize that we are our brother's keeper, 
and uh, you know there's there's people that the the less they are visited or the vet, less they are seen and felt important within a body then it's easy for them just to kind of uh, stop coming or stop uh, you know we have we have missed it so many times along the way uh, in reaching out and continuing to reach out and love people that you know that some people just need a little extra a little extra love okay so uh, I, I know uh, I appreciate the message that's why I appreciate Facebook I want to encourage you though those of you that are on the internet and on Facebook wherever you are in the world today uh, whenever we put messages out there, they're for your good. And we've got a uh, message board just for uh, some folks that are in the church. But, uh, you know, um, um, when we post those things, uh, some people are posting issues out there for us to pray for within our body. So we want to keep that in mind that uh, we need to uh, be mindful that, that people need our prayer and they need us. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful today for what God has done in mine and Donna's life. I, I am really thankful. You know, we have peace and contentment that the world can't, uh, can't provide. Uh, we have our needs met and many desires, actually. So, you know, I can't, I can't complain. You know, uh, we, have, uh, we have healthy children. We have good relationships. Uh, there are many things in our lives that are very good today because I believe God is the, 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 the he loves his children and he wants to do good for his children. Uh, you know, but could some things be better? Absolutely. Absolutely some things could be better. Um, but nothing compares to having peace with God. Amen. Nothing compares to having peace with God. What we want to see, what Pastor Don and I want to see is others experience God's goodness. You know, it's not enough to enjoy something on your own. Uh, we want to share it, don't we? Uh, you know, uh, if you got a, a new restaurant that you like, you'll share it with everybody, won't you? If you got uh, something, a new dish that you're making up, don't you want to share it with everybody? You know, you just want everybody to know about this thing that you got. Well, how much more is the goodness of God? And and nobody can tell about the goodness of God like we can. Yeah, nobody can talk about the goodness of God like we can. What we want to see is others blessed. The you know, the, and and I believe that we have the pastor's heart, just like God told Jeremiah. I want you to consider Jeremiah twenty three four, and if you can't. Uh, stay with me this morning uh, in, in reading along. I do want you to write the, the verses down. But I believe we've got the heart that God said Jeremiah's uh, pastors would have. In Jeremiah 23, 4, it says, I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall what? Fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Now, I think we understand fear, uh, so I don't have to define that for you. And I think we understand lack. And I think we understand lack. Uh, lack is that, that poverty mindset. Um, but that word dismayed means to be broken down, beaten down, confused. You know, there's many in the body of Christ that are broken down, beaten down, and confused. They, they don't know... Uh, what God has for them and and many times people are more broken down beaten down and confused when they're not connected to the body like they should many Christians though they may be on their way to heaven don't experience God's best here and now they live with fear keyword with they live with fear confusion doubt unbelief poverty and lack because of ignorance because of ignorance what uh, Hosea 4 6 says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge well lack of knowledge is ignorance so people today are living far below God's best for them because of ignorance what does God say the remedy is for ignorance well you go back to uh, Jeremiah three fifteen. Jeremiah three fifteen says and I will give you what pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge 
and understanding. Feed you with knowledge and understanding. So what we need is knowledge, but not knowledge alone, because what, is, what does the scripture tell us? It says knowledge puffs up. Knowledge puffs up. There's a lot of people that get a little bit of knowledge, but then they get, get prideful with it. And one of the things I want to encourage you about, Jeremiah 3.15, one of the things about, uh, about knowledge is uh, you've got to really uh, chew on knowledge before you try to share it with somebody else. I find that people hear something and they will want to go out. It's just like that. It's just like getting saved. Well, you, you get saved, you just feel all good and and you feel God and you, you just, everything is great. And, uh, and you go out and you share that with it. You may not, you may not have a whole lot of knowledge to, to argue with those who would say there is no God. You, know, you may not have a whole lot of knowledge to, to deal with that, but you have a testimony you have something to offer the people that would talk to you. And, you know, there's always going to be the naysayers, so you can't, you can't argue with them. You can't, you can't argue and fight, fight and wrangle with them. What you have to do is you just have to, um, uh, you have to share what you know. I was once what, blind and now I see. <laughs> I was dead and now I live. I was in darkness and now I see. I'm in the light. You know, I was, I was this, but now I'm that. You can, you can share from your personal experience the things really that you know. And I see a lot of times people get a little bit of knowledge, and boy, they get a little, they're like, wow, you know, I, the light comes on. They see something. But I would say wait with the knowledge until you have understanding. Okay? Don't just run out half-cocked you know, and, and be ready to fire at every devil that comes along, which you should uh, fight at the devil, fire at the devil, and and uh, and, and do your business uh, with the, with the devil. But at the same time, when it comes to people, realize that you need understanding, and sometimes you need a little bit of experience to be able to deal with some people that you'll encounter out there. So not only does the pastor need to give you knowledge, but needs to give understanding. And I think knowledge can come through the preaching of the word, but understanding always comes through the teaching of the word. Okay, so you wonder how does the fivefold ministry gift, uh, you know, work? Well, you know, there's pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, and evangelists. Well, we all work together for the scripture says, for the edifying of the body, for the perfecting of the saints. Amen. For the edifying of the body, for the perfecting of the saints. So when the saints are perfected in love, then, you know, we can find our place in God and we can move on. Let me move on. God has big plans for you. Man, God doesn't do anything small. <laughs> he doesn't do anything small. He, he's got big plans. Put it this way. He's got bigger plans than we do. Okay. He's got bigger plans than we do. My plans uh, 15 years ago was simply to sit behind a sound booth, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and run sound. 15 to 20 years ago, I was happy camper just running the sound. And then once I learned how to play guitar and we got out and started going to rest homes, nursing homes, and this place and that place, you know, then it was like then, then the vision began to expand a little bit of what, uh, of what God could use me and Pastor Donna to do. And it wasn't until God began to speak to us about uh, the plans that he had for us that we began to embrace it further. So if you think this is small, you should have seen what it was 25 years ago. You should have seen what it was 20 years ago. You should have seen what it was 10 years ago, Okay. So just just believe, that, you know. And one of the funny things I I, I kind of see, and I, I've been wanting to post something out, post something on Facebook. I get everywhere I go. It seems like in this city and the county, it seems like people will say, "I've been reading your post," you know, on Facebook. We might get we might get might get ten, fifteen people to like something, you know, out there. Yet I've got ten times that saying they're seeing what we're 
posting and they're saying they get fed by it or they're getting or encouraged by it. And I'm thinking, well, why don't you just put a little like on there? <laughs> you know, why don't you just why don't you just come into agreement with us on it? Well, you know, sometimes people will read things and yeah, why don't you just come on to church? Huh? Come on now. But God has big plans for you. Jeremiah twenty nine, ten through twelve, you usually we always read uh verse eleven here. I want y'all to, I hope y'all are really focusing and tracking with me this morning, okay? Uh, you know, if you've got anything else going on right now, then uh, uh, just focus focus right here because God called you here this morning for, uh, for the word that I'm giving out. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't waste time and he doesn't mince words. So this is, this is your time to get fed. So when you leave here today, you're going to be blessed to be a blessing. So Jeremiah 29, verse 10. This is what the Lord says. And when he says something, I want to know. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. Okay, now we know that this is talking about the time when uh, when Israel was taken out of Babylon and then Nehemiah, uh, you know, they rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem, they built, rebuilt the walls. So we know this is talking about a particular specific time, an event. But you know what? Uh, when God calls a close to one thing and a beginning to another, he's, it's, it, this, this principle still works. I will come and do for you the good things I have promised. Okay, do, you, do we got that this morning? Okay, when he closes one thing and opens up another, it's, there's a principle here. I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised. And if the New Testament in Hebrews tells us that we have a better covenant with better promises, then guess what? He can do for us the good things he has promised. Amen. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Hallelujah. Now, now this, this should bring to mind a passage in, in John, John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have and enjoy life in abundance of the full till it overflows. Well, here God is saying this. You see, there's nothing said in the New Testament. Jesus doesn't say something new. Paul doesn't say anything new. John, John James, the, the apostles that wrote Peter, they didn't write anything new. All they're using is what they already had. Only difference was now it is magnified. It is, it is supersized with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> okay, It's supersized with the Holy Ghost. Now understanding has really come. And now we know and we can understand. See, some people say, well, you can't know the mind of Christ. Well, maybe you can't because you're not saved. But because only a, only a person who's not saved will God withhold anything from as far as knowledge concerning the deep things of God. But the scripture says that he has made known all things to us by his spirit. So God's not withholding anything from us. He's revealing those things to us by his spirit as we go. Well, let's look at this. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. In, the, in those days when you pray, I will listen. Now, was God not listening to the people of Israel when they were in Babylon in captivity? I believe he was listening. He was, he was hearing them. But the promise was attached to a time frame in what he was going to do and fulfill or was a time frame there. Now, the time frame for us has been fulfilled. Yes. When Jesus came, he fulfilled the promise of the Father. Yes. So we're not waiting for a special day anymore. We're not waiting for anything special to happen anymore. It's already happened. Yes. Whatever God said he's going to do, he's going to do. If he said you're blessed, then you're blessed. If he said you're a son of God, you're a child of God, you're a daughter of God, then you are. You're right now that. You're not going to die and get there. You are already a child of God. You're already a son or daughter of God. Well, you know what? The 
blessing, the plans, the things of God don't just happen automatically. Living the life we were born to live doesn't just happen. This is an excuse, those words are an excuse that we make up when we choose to do things our way and we say we're waiting on God or we're not even seeking God and something happens and we say, well, it just had to be God's will. People will say all the time, and I've heard them say, well, you know, I got my ticket to heaven. You know, God understands my weakness. He understands I'm just a human. That You know, he, he made me. He, I'm just dust and all this. Well, you know what? Uh, you may have come out of the dirt, but you were born of your mother and your father into this life and into this world. And if you're born again, the scripture says you're born from above. And if the streets are paved with gold, can you imagine what the dirt of heaven is like? <laughs> can you imagine what the plants of heaven are like? Can you imagine what the life of, of things in heaven is like? You know, you may have been born the first time and your earthly mother and father may have come out of the dirt. Adam and Eve may have come out of the dirt but now if you're born from above and you want to say you're still born from the dirt, well, at least the dirt of heaven is a whole lot healthier and a whole lot better uh, material to be born from than just the dirt of this world. So if you're going to be born from the dirt, realize that you're not born from this earth anymore. You are reborn. You've been born again from above. If we don't get that revelation, folk, we're going to keep acting like the world. We're going to keep acting like earthly dirt people. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, if you don't get this revelation, you're going to keep making excuses for just making bad decisions. Uh, Jesus, help me. Ha, ha, ha. James 4, 6 through 10, and James 5, 13 through 15, uh, 13 through 16. Yeah, you know, the whole, what I'm really talking about, and it don't sound like it right now, but I'm actually talking about having and developing confidence in your prayer life so that when you pray, things happen. So that when you pray, things happen. So that when you speak, mountains move. So that when you declare something, what, uh, 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 Job 23, 26, I believe it is, 22, 26, I forget which it is, says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. 20, 22, 28, I think it is, something like that. But anyway, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. I, you know, uh, you shall speak to the mountain and it shall be moved. Where two, two or more of you gather in my name, there I am in the midst. Where two of you, as touching anything, pray and agree. Yeah. It shall be done of my Father which is in heaven. See, that is the word. That is the truth about the matter. The problem is, is we don't see ourselves the way we see Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. He gives more grace, King James Version of uh, James 4, 6. He gives more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee, will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Now that should shut the mouths of some folks that say, well, you got to be, you, you got to, you got to watch uh, getting uh, too heavenly minded. There are people that say, well, you, you be so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. I don't see anybody so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. 
Matter of fact, I see, I see, and because I can see myself, and I know how I, uh, how I am uh, striving to walk in the rest. And when I say striving, I, I'm just saying recognizing the attacks of the enemy when they come, and then fighting them. See, I, I fight, I fight a lot of devil. You know, I fight the good fight because I win, but the attacks come all the time. The the thoughts come all the time. The 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 strategies, the wiles, the the twistedness, the the things of the world, uh, those fiery darts come all the time. So what what do I have to do? I have to discipline my thinking. I have to discipline my uh, sometimes what I do, where I, what I say, and where I go. I have to discipline who I allow myself to connect with. I have to discipline myself because if it's challenging dealing with certain people, then I have to pray before I get into that situation, but I got to realize too, sometimes you just got to take somebody with you. You see, Jesus never sent people out by themselves. He always sent them out in twos. Let's look at James 5, 13 through 16. No, we've we've been reading, we've been harping on this, we've been talking about this, but I, I want to pull some things out here this morning. Praise God in the short amount of time that I get. Um, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. James 5.13. This is in the New Living. And then I'm going to read 16 in the Amplified. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you are any of you happy? Sing, sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with an oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess to one another, therefore, your faults. Now, let's, the Amplified says faults. Your slips, your false steps, your offenses, and your sins. And pray for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Now, there's something that I, I saw in this as, as I was reading this, but I, I'm going to... I'm going to pull together about nine thoughts from James 4, 6 through 10 and James 5, 13 to 16 that gives us some very important keys to experiencing God's best. Number one, walk humbly with God. I'm not taking this, I'm taking this directly out of the passage we just read. Number one, walk humbly with God. Why? Because God gives grace to the humble. When we walk in pride, and pride does what? Pride says, I can do it. I got this. I can do this. Well, what happens then, if you don't need, if you don't need help, you don't need God's grace. What is God's grace? According to Hebrews 4.16, um, uh, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to what? Help in time of need. So if we define grace as help, empowerment, favor, all of these things that the word grace entitles and entails, then we realize that if we're walking in pride, then we don't have the ability to receive the grace of God for the thing that we need help for. It's when we humble ourselves that God gives the grace because we recognize that we can't do it ourselves. We recognize that God is the source. God is, is where my help comes from. Even when I speak to something, I can only do it but through the blood and the power and the name of Jesus. See, even when I can speak to something, I'm praying for somebody. Some, you know, our prayers, I tell you, if we realize just sometimes how uh, off kilter our prayers are sometimes, we'd realize that, boy, God has a lot of mercy for us. <laughs> God has a lot of mercy for us. And sometimes he does something just because he says, they just don't know any better. 
Number two, uh, submit to God. Submit to God. Now, what does submission to God mean? Anybody got any ideas? What does submission to God mean? Praise God. Submission to God means, in essence, do what he has already said and what he is saying. When we submit to God, we are going to walk in what? We're going to walk in obedience. We're going to do what he has already said and what he is currently saying because he's still speaking. Matter of fact, he's speaking right now. I was talking to somebody last week or the week before, and he said, you know, I'm just so so envious of people who say they, they have uh, heard from God. And uh, I was like, well, you know, I can understand that. I, I can't say that there have been very many times I have heard or sensed an audible voice of God, but there are many times that I'll sense something in my spirit that I know that's the voice of God. I just know that I know that I know. And what happens is a Satan will fire off those fiery darts to do everything he can to say, no, no, no. <laughs> that wasn't God. But I told this person, I said, well, I want to challenge that. You've never heard from God. I said, well, go read, go read uh, this particular book of the Bible. Okay, go read the book of John. And I said, if you can, you can read the book of John and say God has not spoken to you, I will give up the ministry. <laughs> if you can read the book of John and say, well, I didn't hear any. I didn't hear from God. Well, then we're all in trouble. <laughs> if you can't see within the red letters, God speaking, then there's a problem. <laughs> okay, it, really, if you can't, if you can't say, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son," you can't see that that is a word from God, and and just mull it over, chew on that, and then and then any any inkling of wisdom or understanding or anything you get from that you can't say came from God. That's where the understanding comes from. Remember even when Peter you know God asked uh, Jesus asked uh, Peter, "Who do you say that I am?" He said, well, you're the son of the living God. What did Jesus tell Peter? You didn't get this from man. You got this from my father in heaven. So when you sit down and you read something in the scripture and you get an understanding of it, you know where that understanding came from? It came from God. <laughs> So that's why I say I can put my I can put my ministry, I can put my life on the line and just say, if you can read the book of John and you don't hear from God, then I quit. Because I know that when somebody sits down and reads, unless their mind is so closed and so warped and so twisted, I believe God will even speak to a twisted mind so that he can gain more sons and daughters. But if they're that twisted, they need to be born again. By the time they get to John 3, 3, <laughs> Nicodemus, you know, how must how can I be how can I become born? How can I uh, how can I enter into my mother's womb again? And Jesus says, But well, you know what? You must be born from what? Above. You must be born from above. You gotta be born again. Well, boy, I tell you what, we could spend a lot of time on one of these things. What else does what else does it say? Resist the devil. You know, I, I was I don't know if I can remember it as clearly right now, but you know, when we talk about resisting the devil, what hap what is the 
what is what happens what is set in motion when we resist the devil what is set in motion is the force of faith and and the and the power of god to resist the devil because here he says resist the devil and guess what he will flee because we also know from this where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And we know that where two or more are gathered in his name, he is there in their midst. We also know from, uh, what is it, uh, Psalm 8-2, he says that, uh, that praise stops the avenger. Satan cannot, Satan cannot operate effectively in the presence of the Lord. The only thing Satan can do in the presence of the Lord is make accusations right. or condemnation. He can try to bring condemnation, but guess what? Those are those fiery darts, and we have to say, no, I resist that. How do I resist? What is the, what is the act of resisting? The act of resisting is saying what the truth is. The act of resisting is speaking the truth. The devil tells you, well, you're not going to amount to anything. And you say, well, I'm, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. So see, what, what, you've done, what you do in, in speaking the promise and speaking the answer, that is resisting. Just standing with your arms folded like a stone wall is, is not necessarily resisting. Reminds me of the, the time when um, this guy who had been drinking a little more than uh, he could handle uh, stopped in front of a shop that Pastor Donna was doing uh, beauty work out of. And this fella... Uh, confronts me and I forget why it was in the beginning I think maybe I said God bless you or uh, hope you're having a good day or something like that and uh, you know he decided uh, he didn't like that so I mean he's like right here you know right here in my face <laughs> you know I was like okay let's see how this works <laughs> <laughs> and and I could tell he's the one that had the problem, not me. So why should I get shook up? So you know, here he he's ranting, and and I'm just I'm standing there, and I'm like you know just speaking, you know, the truth in love. I'm not condemning him, not telling him he's you know you no good, filthy, drunk, alcoholic. Uh, you 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 germ you, you <laughs> not not saying anything to him not calling him names or anything just uh just calm and uh and finally you know finally he left and and, and there was no there was no fight it takes two to fight all he was looking for was an agitation and then, and then it would have been on like Donkey Kong, they say, you know. But you know what? When, when, when you know who you are in Christ and you know that what you're doing is, is right, you, you don't owe any man, uh, you know, an argument. You say, well, I'm not here to judge you. You've already, you're obviously judging yourself. <laughs> you, know, you don't need me to jump on board. But the point was, was the resisting, I could have just stood there and looked like, try me. You know, go ahead, throw the first punch, pal. I could have just stood there with that look, like, go ahead, make my day. But no, resisting meant releasing faith-filled words that would, what, speak the truth in love, uh, be slow to speak, quick to hear, you know, exercise the two ears instead of the one mouth. But then when you do speak, have something worth saying. 
<laughs> right? And what happened was the guy just went off down the road. <laughs> He was looking for a fight, and it just wasn't going to happen. Now, maybe a few years before that might have been different. I don't know. Draw near to God is the next point. Point four, draw near to God. Ding. That's, that's the first closing bell. Uh, draw near to God. Now, what happens when we draw near to, to God? This is what I believe he's saying to us here. Live a clean life with grace God has given you. Live a clean life with the grace God has given you. Draw near to God. When you're drawing near to God, you can't hold on to things that are against God. When you draw near to him, you can't hold on to things that he that, that displeases him or, or, or causes conflict between you and him because when we draw near to him, we're taking on his presence. We're, we're entering into, when we draw near to him, we're entering into his presence. And in his presence, there's freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from all those bondages. Freedom from what? Freedom from the things that we listed earlier. Freedom from fear. Freedom from, from uh, being broken down, beat down, and confused. Freedom from lack. In his presence, when we draw near to him, we have freedom. Freedom to live what? Freedom to live a life with grace that God has given us. Uh, next point, be single-minded. This is, a, this is the point that, that James has made more than once. Be single-minded. What, what does that mean, be single-minded? Get rid of the distractions. Get rid of the distractions. Moving on. If you're afflicted, pray. If you're happy, sing. Make a melody in your, uh, from your heart to the Lord. Are you sick? Call for the elders of the church. Are you burdened with are you burdened with sin? Confess your slips, missteps, offenses, and sins to one another. Uh, what's the what's the deal with that? Some people say, well, you know, I, I don't want to confess anything to people because people will go and talk. Well, obviously pick the people wisely who you're going to confess to, and hopefully you can trust your pastor and the leadership that, that's in place. Confess your slips, missteps, offenses, and sins to one another that doesn't mean you know every dirty little detail some guy preaching at a church over in Morganfield years ago said he was uh, kind of caught off guard when he was sharing his testimony and things were going great and somebody said share the share the details share the the details they, they were wanting to know about all the the junk and he was trying to come from the point of view that I'm free in Christ now. Yeah, you know, I've had a past. He was saying, I've got a past. Everybody's got a past. But he said, I don't want to magnify my past. I don't want to magnify my sin. I want to magnify God because he's the one that helped me overcome the sin. Well, these two passages and all of these thoughts go hand in hand with Third John 2. How, you say? Well, let's look at Third John 2. The, the, the point from James 5.16 that came alive to me is when it says, pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. Not only healed, but restored. Restored to what? Restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Does God want us to think God thoughts all the time? Well, absolutely. Does he want us to, to, uh, to, to think about, meditate, chew on, mull over, go over day and night, night and day? Does that sound like a scripture that we've read before? Yeah? Huh. Interesting. He's saying here that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. How does 3 John 2 play into this? 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way, that your body may keep well, even as your soul 
keeps well and prospers. Wow, can you see the connection here? James 5.16 and 3 John 2. It's the first time I saw this connection before. See, not only does he want us healed, because God will heal, God will heal a worm if it will bring him glory. <laughs> we, we was out on a, on a ride yesterday on the motorcycle, and, and uh, I probably got maybe 50 feet from something in the road, and I thought, wow, that's interesting, and, and it was slithering. <laughs> it's probably five to six foot snake. And uh, and before I could, you know, do any kind of swerving motion because I didn't want to freak her out, I just ran over it. <laughs> well, well, uh, I must have caught like the upper, you know, fourth or fifth of the thing, but you know, it was just writhing on the ground, and then a car behind me went smack and. And we came back later and found it alongside the road because I kept looking, where did that snake, I wonder where he is, I hope he made it, you know, and all that. Well, I think after I hit him, he was done for. But you know what? God will heal a snake if it would bring him glory. Right. He heals Eddie. He heals Eddie, that's right. But you know what? There's more than healing. There is a, there, there is a spiritual tone of mind and heart that is the place where the peace of God dwells. You know, if you're, if you're having all this confusion, like in, in Jeremiah where he says, you know, fear, confusion, doubt, unbelief, poverty, and lack, you know, if we can overcome all that with knowledge, if we can overcome ignorance concerning those things with knowledge, then there is a peace that ensues. I said, I don't have to be afraid of that no more. I have authority over that. Because I tell you, when I, when I hit the snake right afterwards, all these thoughts started coming. Boy, I'm sure glad that thing didn't come up, you know, around, the, around and end up at my feet, you know. That thought came. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, all kinds of thinking started coming after the fact. And isn't that, just, isn't that just like the devil to try to, you know, get you to get you to see, you know, what has happened and develop a, 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 a pattern of thinking from that that really leads nowhere? <laughs> he leads down a dead-end road every time. But boy, I sure think about that snake. Boy, I'm sure glad it didn't come up around my feet. Boy, 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 I wonder if I'll hit another one. You know, <laughs> you know I'm just saying. <laughs> James, John, the word of the Lord to Jeremiah have a lot in common. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you. God has good plans for each one of us. Secondly, he has not hidden those plans from us. He has, he, God has supernaturally kept his word so that we could have it today. If it wasn't for the supernatural grace and protection and preservation of the Word of God, we would just be sitting around here second-guessing and talking about something else probably. If it wasn't for the Word of God in our hands today, we would be no different than the people of the Old Testament, or better yet, Job, because all Job knew was how to offer up sacrifices. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> Job what didn't have a covenant with God. He wasn't in an area of the world where, matter of fact, Job is considered to be the earliest book of the of the whole Old Testament. So before the law of Moses, before before everything was written, Job was. <laughs> Somewhere between Adam and Eve. Somewhere after Adam and Eve, Job was. So he, he, he didn't have a whole lot of knowledge other than 
uh, there were supposed to be sacrifices made and if you do a bunch of bad stuff you probably need to make up for it by burning offerings <laughs> okay <clears throat> that's the best Job knew so God has not hidden his plan for us he, he told us what his plans were he told us that they are good plans and he also told us in Mark 16, 15, from his own mouth, go into all the world. So part of the plan of God for you and I is to go into all the world. And if not Africa, South America, or, uh, Europe, or how about Providence? How about Dixon? How about Poole? How about <laughs> all points between uh, Poole and Providence and Seabury and Black Ford? Every point, every point in between, because from Seabury or from uh, Seabury to to Pool and Blackford to uh, to Seabury, it's it's all encompassed here. If you look at your map, everything is in there, in Webster County. Thank God, huh? Praise God. God has called us and commissioned us to go into all the world. Third point on that uh, of the of the of bringing James, John, and the word of the Lord to Jeremiah, the third point on that is he has given us pastors to help us overcome the obstacles in our lives. God told Jeremiah pastors would teach people how to avoid the trap of fear, discouragement, confusion, and how to overcome and conquer lack. James tells us how to avoid the traps of the adversary by giving us practical instructions in everyday life. Now I'm using James, but you can also look at uh, at Paul. Uh, there's uh, if you if you read Ephesians chapter five. I mean that's got to be that's got to be one of those taboo scriptures for people that are out there, you know, saying they can do anything they want to do and 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 live a Christian life because Ephesians 5 knocks that right in the head. <laughs> okay, uh, you just read Ephesians chapter 5. Well, you know what, folks? There's no shortcuts to receiving and walking in God's plan for us. Uh, prayer will not override what we know God has already said. In prayer, you will hear Holy Spirit speak to you, but he won't tell you to do something contrary to what God has already said. Pleading with God will not change his heart. When, when Moses talked to God, when Abraham talked to God, they were not trying to get God to do something that was against his heart. His heart is that none perish. It always has been that none perish, but all come to repentance. So when, when Abraham and Moses were pleading with God about the people, they were not trying to get him to do something that was counter his heart his nature. Well, God, what's it going to look like? What are the people going to say in foreign lands when they hear that God destroys his people? <laughs> God was like, well, go down and tell your people. <laughs> God gives his people to Moses now. Okay, they're your people. Go down and tell your people. Take these tablets to your people. And then Moses gets mad and or swallows the people. And <laughs> it's better when Charlton Heston does it. <laughs> God said, boom. Ah, oh, boy. <laughs> Making sacrifices will not appease God for sinful, habitual behavior what what's all this got to do with prayer i know inquiring minds want to know if we're going to have confidence see the whole thing is having confidence with god having confidence that our relationship is is uh, is strong having confidence that when when we pray god hears us how can we maintain a level of confidence? Well, get to know God's word and you'll know his heart. Get to know his heart and you'll know his will. God works through those who have a clean heart. See, uh, David, though he sinned, when confronted, he repented. He was quick to repent. See, David did not have the Holy Spirit in him like we do today, convicting of sin. 
That's what the job of the priest and the prophet was. So when 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 the when the deed was was discovered or spoken to the priest, the prophet, and the prophet confronts David, then this is Holy Spirit dealing with David to get right with God. You say, well, anybody should know that the things David did was wrong. <laughs> David's conscience is the same as the conscience as an unsaved person in the world today whose eyes is veiled by the God of this world. David's thinking would have been just like the rest of us before Christ. The Holy Spirit did not come in the same way. Yes, I do know that, yes, Holy Spirit, God did speak to kings and did, did minister to kings directly. But it's not the same as Holy Spirit dwelling in and convicting of sin before, during, and after the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the deed. Okay? Just keep all that in mind. If you have a clean heart toward God, you'll be quick to repent when he speaks to you about the situation. If you know you're walking into a situation that is dangerous, sinful behavior, you know you're walking into it now and you've got the Holy Spirit convicting you before you get in there, then, then you're just plain setting yourself up. You're just plain setting yourself up for trouble. Because as soon as Holy Spirit speaks to you, that is the time to make the change. That is the time. Don't get so caught up in the moment that when Holy Spirit speaks, shh, not now. I had a, had a wife tell me that her husband would do that to her when he was on the internet communicating with other women. The wife would say, who are you speaking to? And the husband would say, shh. Shh, shh, shh. It's not, you're not allowed in this. How many times are people doing that to the Holy Spirit today? And we're praying, asking God to do things, and wondering why prayers aren't getting answered. Is there a place in our walk that we're saying, shh, 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 shh. I, I don't want to hear that right now. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too miserable. I'm too justified. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Holy Spirit, I don't have time for you right now. I deserve this thing that I'm fixing to do. Shh, 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 shh. I don't have time to listen to that right now. And you know what happens? The next time he tries to speak, it becomes easier to say, shh, 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 shh. And then you know what eventually happens? Romans chapter 1. He tells us, I sure, Lord, we didn't mean to go this way. He says, because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, I turned them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are unseemly. Because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, which meant they knew God which meant they had enough knowledge at least of God to say, no God. He said, then I turned them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are unseemly. And according to that passage, the, the most base thing that a person will turn to 
men with men, men with men, women with women. According to that passage, you look at that. Turn them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are unseemly, men with men, women with women. Now that's that's when you know we don't we don't judge you know in a sense uh, to condemn people that are falling into that. But the hope is is that you can save some. That's hard is not so hardened and so reprobate that they won't turn back to God. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They shh, shh, shh. no, I don't want no. I can't listen to that right now. My emotions are, my, my body, you, Lord, you know I got needs. <laughs> I, say, I got a multitude of needs. Shh, shh, shh. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in this moment, we take our hands down. Lord, hands raised in worship is a sign of surrender, but hands raised to keep you at bay are dangerous. Holy Spirit, I pray today that you deal with each one of us We're trying to find reasons why our prayers aren't getting answered. We're trying to find what's the, what's the purpose? What's going on, Lord? Could it be that some listening through the internet, some even here today would say, Holy Spirit's been speaking to me, but I've been ashamed. I've been caught up in my own selfish desires. Lord, deal with our heart today. Holy Spirit, you're still brooding, just like in the beginning when you hovered over the face of the deep. You're, you're brooding over those deep places in our life this morning. And I ask that you reveal those things this morning before it's too late. Reveal those things in our heart that need to be uprooted. Just want to give Holy Spirit a chance just to speak to you this morning. Just let Holy Spirit speak to you and show you areas that you can say, I've, I've held him at bay in this area I've said shh, 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 shh. I don't want to hear that right now now so that we don't stay there let's just give that thing to God because it has become a God Lord I give to you every every lustful thought I give to you every rebellious intention every rebellious act Lord we just lay at your feet today every area this morning that would be compromised Holy Spirit, just thank you right now. First John 1 John 1.9 says if you, you come to him and you give him these things, you lay them before him, he said you'll forgive and cleanse of all unrighteousness. So in your heart, with your lips between you and God this morning, just say, Lord, I'll just give it to you this morning. No, I, Lord, I, I don't deserve that. 
I deserve your best. Now, Lord, I just plead the blood of Jesus over everyone listening today. That the blood of Jesus would cleanse and purify our thoughts. Lord, it's, it's really your word that does the cleansing because you told the disciples in John 15 that, that they had heard the word and the word did the cleansing. So, Lord, the, we've heard the word today. But, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus to remove the sting of death and remove the sting of fear, to remove the sting of lack, to remove the sting of insecurities, to remove the sting of, uh, of everything that you paid for. Lord, those that need to hear this message today, I pray that, God, it will be preserved for them for the future. But, God, those of us that have received this today, we now have freedom, freedom from guilt, freedom from shame, freedom from a disconnection in our fellowship with you. Hallelujah. Yes, that's right. Lay those distractions at your feet, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if if you've been sitting there and you've been been praying and and thinking with me about the things that that's that's in your heart this morning, I, I just want you just to, if you've if you've worked through this with me this morning, I just want you to say I'm forgiven. Hallelujah. I'm forgiven. Hallelujah. Uh, I am I just make this declaration. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. I'm clean through the words which Pastor Mike and Holy Spirit and Jesus has spoken unto me. I'm free. I am free. I am free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Wow. Just really sense the anointing of God just uh, uh, during this time this morning. Uh, uh, didn't, didn't plan to uh, go that direction quite so, but uh, you know what? Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. Um, like what Fred Price said, he taught a series back in the 80s, I believe it was, or maybe early 90s. He said... Uh, he said, I'm getting ready to preach about a 10-week message on the family. He said, if saying certain, certain words will offend you, you probably need to stay away for 10 weeks. Because <laughs> he was going to be talking about sexual issues and, and things like that. And he said, he said, I know where I'm going to start and I know where I'm going to end, but a lot of stuff in the middle is kind of fuzzy. So he said, he said, I don't know what's going to come out. <laughs> he said, I just try to be led by the Spirit of God. And that, that's, that's really the desire of our hearts, to be led by the Spirit of the Lord. We know where we want to start, and we kind of have an idea sometimes where we're going. But, you know, uh, I, I know a, a lot of us like to line up on line and precept upon precept. But you know what? Holy Ghost impartation will give exactly what's needed and not just a bunch of information. Uh we don't need a bunch of information. We've had enough information up to our eyeballs. You know, we should be out casting out devils and raising the dead, and 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 this place should be full ten times on a Sunday. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, you're here. Praise God. You know, we appreciate you. Amen. Praise God. Wow. It's kind of one of those feelings right here. We just don't want to do anything, but, uh, you know, we need to we need to just dismiss. And if anybody needs any special prayer this morning, uh, we're here for you. Okay? All right. Lord, we just dismiss this service in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the power that flows from the throne of God through our bodies to the lives of others. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus, you are the word. Lord, when we sit down and read your word, 
Lord, we're hearing from the Father. So, Lord, we just thank you today. And, God, we pray that as we go and as we dismiss, Lord, we don't leave your presence. Lord, we take you with us wherever we go. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen.